What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of For the Love of Cinema, a movie podcast, where our motto is, we just hope it doesn't suck. This is episode 362, broken up into two parts, A and B. A. B. Thank you, sirs. 362A, posting on 1226, will be a discussion on Wonka. And 362B Wonka. will be a discussion on, oh, sorry, 362B, posting on 1229, will be the third and final installment of The State of Star Wars is part three. Brought to you by myself and friend of the show and special guest, Jeremy Lee. I'm one of your hosts, Grayson Maxwell. Joining me as she did does most weeks is Roger Stillian and our very lovely perma guest, Christopher Bond. Gentlemen, how are we? You've been, I, down, you've been downgraded? I would, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Before you say what you're going to say, you've been downgraded to most weeks. Did you hear that? Not yeah. every week, so most weeks. I would like to note that I missed three shows in the entirety <laughs> of 2023 <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. just because two of them were in relatively close proximity i'm the seems, yes. you're, you're not most weeks mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It just it seems worse than it than it is also um did you listen to the episode oh yeah no you? i'm not dead i'm not fucking dead <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that one you've been fatality again oh. how would you like to respond sir uh i'm pretty sure i just said that i'm definitely not dead mm. I mean, I seem to be two and zero, so I'm fine. You seem yeah, to be. Chris is two and zero. Yeah, you wait till next time you miss. <laughs> <laughs> I can only Which will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, um, I hope everyone. This will be posting after Christmas, so I hope everyone had a very merry Christmas and uh, had a had a happy holiday day and ate lots of food and had a good time. How do you see this going? Now, since we're recording early because of the time constraints of the holidays, how do you think the day is going to go, guys? Anything good, bad? What? Tell me. Uh, Are you I have talking a, about Christmas or like the rest of this episode. I, I because... think he means this day. In, no, 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 no. This I, I mean, Friday? I mean, like I mean, this is Christmas. Friday, the twenty second. <laughs> oh, you mean Christmas? Oh, I, mean, I mean today. Today I have a mini Christmas happening with with uh, with my side of the family, so my kids are excited. They're going to get gifts already. There you go. And uh, this is the earliest I've ever done Christmas activities, so this is this is going to feel weird. Nice, but I mean, we just have family that lines up well this time. Well, so, that's good though. People are visiting from from you know Cleveland area and outside of that, so it just works out. Like uh, I'm not even done shopping yet. And I mean yeah, that seriously. No, no, I get it. I get it. Because, I'm, a, I'm yeah. a habitual Christmas Eve shopper. This is one of the few times I haven't had to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think it'll be fine. But, like, I have stuff for myself that I still have to go, like, that my family is getting me that we have to go get. Yeah. Okay, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, we know, we know what I'm going to get. I just have to actually physically get it. So, mm. I've, uh, I've got to finish wrapping uh, for, uh, the gifts that my kids and I got the wife. So that, other than that, though, I'm, I'm in the clear Christmas stuff's done and ready to go. Uh, Grayson, I, I'm going to leave you out of this conversation because it doesn't matter for you at all. But uh, do you take your daughter like Christmas shopping, like take her out to like get things for the wife or do you do or is that not something that you do? I mean, here's the thing. I'm not above it. And we've done yeah, stuff yeah. like that for like birthdays. But like this year, I just bought what. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like so that it's that, kind of like 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 the family tradition that like me and the wife and, and my kids like like what like our dynamic has going on and uh it's always interesting to watch like my youngest like the evolution of her gift giving so far yeah because like last year we walked we like we walked into the mall and we walked into michael's okay uh, no 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 marshall marshall's the blue one whatever yeah marshall yeah we walked into marshall's right which is which is kind of like a weird catch-all store yeah. but like like mid quality sure. stuff and like we were able to walk in and everything she saw for the next three minutes was like, this is for mom, 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 mom. And we were done. We didn't have to leave Marshall's. It was great. Nice. This year, I had to walk the entire goddamn mall. Because, oh, no. like, she's like, it's it, it just, you know, no, I don't want to get that for mom. That's not for mom. That's not for mom. It's like, come on, kid. This was so easy last year. So I just, well, it's, I, it's I, only going to get harder like, the older she gets. That. The older she gets, the it's only going to get more tricky, right? No, she gets more difficult the older she gets is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> not the wife, the kid, but it is what it is. Well, yes. what what they want for the mom though, that's going to get a little more difficult as they you know as they get older. I would yeah, but as they get older, they can make more yeah, informed yeah. more decisions, decisions more as well. Decisions. Yeah, Fair. yep, Fair. yep. I, I got to be honest. So I am I am drinking not only coffee but also diet coke. So I am firing on all caffeinated cylinders today. Guys. Did you mix them? No, no, we're not. They're not mixed. That'd be that'd be gross. But they are being consumed know. together. <laughs> Sounds kind of gross that you're drinking them around the same time anyway. Yeah, it's a, you know what? It's... You do you and I'll do me. That's 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 what I will say. I'm just going to drink my cold bottle of water. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm rocking too. It's going to be great. Cold no. water is good. What else is going on, guys? Anything? No, nah, just holidays, Christmas time. I'm excited. I like that. I like the, the, I don't know. I hope it snows because my youngest has already like almost cried, bro- like broke down, cried a few times because it's not a white Christmas. Well, she's going to be real upset when it's 60 here on Christmas I because know, it's going to be fucking 60 I've had degrees to explain, here Christmas. I've had to explain that not all Christmases have snow and 
it's it's not going well. Yeah, so I'm legitimately trying to get my family to just let me barbecue on Christmas Day because <laughs> it's it's going to be that oh, warm. I could bring out I could, I could barbecue grill for my Christmas Day too. Right? Be. See, some burgers and dogs, baby. Let's I'll say, go. I'll say, I'll say, I was thinking cinnamon rolls on the grill. Honestly. Oh yeah, you can do that. my that god! Good. Cinnamon rolls yeah. on the grill. Oh my goodness! That'd be good. Yeah, I got a flat top. I can cook anything, brother. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah, remember. So, what was it, Chris? Last week or last week or the two four um, the month ago, Roger was going. I said he was smoking meats. Whatever that means, I have no idea. Yeah, what smoking means. meats. Were you were you at all doing that, Roger? Smoking meats. In, I mean, in, I do that all the time. In any sense of the word, if if you get my drift. Oh yeah, no, I don't. Explain it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk, explain it like I'm five. No, 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 no. That, that's all right. That's all right. But no, oh, okay, weird. That's like a felony. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Anyway, what else is going on, guys? Anything before we get into it? Are you guys ready for 2024? That's the question, because it's coming. I mean, 2024 is going to be an interesting year for a lot of reasons not movie-related. Other than okay, that, yeah, I, I mean, I think oh it's going to be cool. That's going to start... <laughs> I, I I assume I'm picking up on your drift, and I'm not, I'm not going to say what it is, but like for, for those of you who caught on, like I assume that's going to start pretty quick in 2024, like right that's away. It's yeah. already happening, brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a very it's going to it's going to determine. I think Colorado came out swinging, bat bat bat. God, it's so yeah, it's very strange, but I imagine 2024 is going to dictate much of the world's goings on yeah. politically for a long time. We'll see, but no, I mean I'm excited for next year. Uh, I don't know. It, it this seems like a it seems like a, a a good stretch of uh, of what I got going on, so I hope it just carry keeps on carrying. I agree. I agree. Well, yeah. just another day, baby. Yep, yep. Just another day. Let's jump into it, then, shall we, gentlemen? Arr. All right. Ninety nine percent of world events don't affect me at all. That's true. Ninety nine point nine percent of world events. Yeah. All right. This is episode, this is episode three hundred sixty two of For the Love of Cinema, a podcast about movies, film, and cinema. It's post season every Tuesday and Friday at five a.m. on Podbean which then distributes to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music. Each and every week, we start with the box office, current and upcoming releases, what streaming, trailers, and movies of the week. Without further ado, the box office isn't going to change because we're, we're checking in on a Friday, but just the last box office was one, one through five, Wonka, The Hunger Games, The Boy in the Hair, and Godzilla Minus One. Trolls band together, the highest earner Wonka being $39 million last weekend and the lowest being $3.9 million. And six through ten last weekend are as follows. Wish. Napoleon, Renaissance, a film by Beyonce, Poor Things, and The Shift. So there you go. If you want to hear more about the box office, check out our last episode. He's never done the box office faster in his life. Well, there's nothing to report. Um, um, unless you want to report dailies, which I don't think people really care about. Do. Okay, so, no, we're nope. good. We're good. I just, I'm just Fair. For, yeah. for, for, for the audience. <laughs> All right. Yep, that's it. There's your box office. I'm sure like a lot will change, of course, after... after it took us two and a half day. years to get him to do that quickly. Yep. Jesus Christ. Thank God. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Let's look at upcoming releases. Again, not a whole lot has changed on upcoming releases. Real quick, uh, this this past weekend, the 15th, uh, brought us... No, when I'm, when, sorry, the 22nd, which is t- which is t- today. Sorry, doing the podcast on a different day, just it got thrown, thrown me off. So as of Friday 22nd, Anyone But You with Handsome Glenn, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, The Iron Claw, Migration, Poor Things, all theatrical. Uh, with the next release date is December 25th, which is Monday this coming, which is Christmas this coming Monday, The Boys in the Boat, The Color Purple, Ferrari. And then just the first two, the first two release weeks are January 5th and uh, that's got memory goes wider and night swim. If you remember the demon pool, and then the twelfth oh, yeah, is the haunted yep. pool. Yes. Did the, you did, did you hear my comment about the about the demon pool last uh, for last episode? Probably I did not. not no. I, I said so. It, it just does it just go into hibernation during the winter time? Like yeah, just turns yeah, it, off. <laughs> <laughs> Haunting goes away. January twelfth, we start off strong with Jason Statham kicking ass in the Beekeeper. Then we got the Book of Clarence, Mean Girls, and Pixar's Soul re release, which I am oddly excited for because I really like Pixar's Soul. And I know Chris, you're probably in that pool as well. I lo- yeah, I, Soul's a good movie. Soul's a fantastic film. I it, thought so too. Vis- visually, soundtrack wise, all of it, it's very good. So, and they're re- what are the what are the other two? Luca and what's the other one? There? Oh, um, Turning Red are all in, all in, the in, stu- all the yeah. stuff that they messed up during COVID. Or they didn't get to come out for full release during yeah. COVID. Correct, yeah. correct. That's all. I think months Turning apart. Red visually will be a good one to see in theaters. Honestly, I think so. I think you're probably right about that. Yeah. And Chris, March first is a big. It's a, that's a Friday. It's a big day. Well, guess what comes out March first? You should know this. Is it Dune two? It is Dune part two, my friend. Well, part two. Yeah, yeah. We are close on its heels right now. So, 
It doesn't feel close. But That's it's fine. not close. <laughs> three months. What would have been close was was two weeks ago when I should have seen it. Or three. That's true. That is okay. Now. Fair enough. That's very true. Well, there's your upcoming. Not a whole lot to move there. I'm though. I think that once the new year hits and my industry really starts to go back up again, I think things are gonna are gonna move around like crazy because of this strike and whatever else will will have affected. I think things are really gonna start to move around, but we won't see that until after the holidays are completo. Yeah. Take a look at what streaming I chose. Uh, HBO Max is our last, this is our final, fifth and final in the rotation. Of course, the Christmas movie of all Christmas movies, Die Hard by director John McTiernan, Bruce Willis, uh, Alan Rickman, Bonnie Bedelia, Reginald Vell Johnson. It's a feature in 1988. I don't think it needs, it's one of the few movies that doesn't need any introduction. Die Hard's a hell of a movie. It's a great action movie. It's, I think one one of the great John McTiernan films uh, it started a lot. Uh, Alan Rickman, what else to say? But they got that age old debate: is it a Christmas movie or is it a movie that just simply takes place at Christmas? So, what's the difference? I mean, there's a lot of difference, I guess. Does that mean so? That's that's how you make your decision. If you know, if a movie has to be Christmassy themed, I don't know what that actually means. But I mean, if it takes place on like a Christmas Eve, or, you know, a Christmas party, which is what Die Hard is, yeah. you know, I don't see how you could be like, it's not a Christmas movie. Why? Because it's action. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and, like, look, I, I won't be the guy that dies on the hill that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. But, well, like, but I mean, like, take the Christmas Chronicles or whatever. Like, 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 the, the, like those aren't devoid of like, you know, like big set pieces and well, actiony stuff. Let know? me let me ask you an actual thing. A movie like The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Okay. There's death in that movie. There is. There's actually a lot of stuff in that movie that's really well, the second one's like really like <laughs> you know, really, yeah, yeah. really weird. Yeah. But like just because it has Santa in it, you know, and it takes place in the North Pole, like that takes place over a whole year's time. Like that's not a Christmas based movie. It's based on something that's Christmas adjacent. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's correct. That's, correct. that's correct. true. Yeah, it's not like uh, what was the one we saw with uh, um, with Dan, with Dan Ar- uh, Dan Arbor in it? He was Santa Claus just murdering. People. Oh, Dave, yeah, Violent Night. Yeah, yeah, that is a Christmas action movie, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's like that's like the specific. Like, Although the specific, I would I I would call movie. Violent Night I I would or whatever that was called what was that Night Before Violent Night. Called? Yeah, I, I I would call that a Christmas movie though. I honest to God would. Sure. Well, yeah. Yeah, but like that's undeniably Christmas, right? Because yeah, but so is the Santa Claus. Saint I mean, Nicholas. the Santa Claus is a Christmas movie. It is not a Christmas. Well, sure. Well, that, that's what that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but it's just because it has Christmas theme in it. You know, yeah. like if it was a movie about Santa Claus like killing people in the Caribbean in like July, yeah, is that a Christmas movie or not? Just yeah, because mean, it stars Santa Claus. I mean, like if there's an episode of The Sopranos that happens, you know, and like there, like there's a Thanksgiving dinner somewhere in there. It's not a Thanksgiving episode, right? It's right. just yeah, it's it's Thanksgiving adjacent, you know. Fun sure. family Sopranos but, I mean, episode. If Die Hard is, then so is Lethal Weapon. I mean, they're the same pretty much the same Fine. thing so yeah, yeah i mean that there's that age old debate but i don't really yeah. i don't it, it's more of a never should have been a real debate only like kind of a funny debate but it's turned into a real debate which kind of has i mean like look funded, if you but... need an excuse to watch die hard that's on you not me that's true, that <laughs> yeah, is... i was gonna say either way it's a good recommendation yeah die hard's a good fucking movie <laughs> gather the kids around watch die hard <laughs> for a family um family smoke tradition. cigarettes as a family <laughs> <laughs> all right roger Listen. let's let's move on to yours Source Code by director Duncan Jones, Jake Gyllenhaal, Michelle Monaghan, Vera Farmiga, Jeffrey Wright. It's a feature from 2011. I you you oddly like this movie a lot. I do like this movie because I think it's like well written mm-hmm. and the idea behind it's actually pretty cool. So Source Code is a movie about a guy who is uh, nearly dead, um, like pretty much in all intents and purposes is dead. Only his brain and his heart and his lungs are still alive. Um. And he's hooked into a computer system that is basically sending him back in time to relive like a nine or 12 minute window. I don't remember exactly which a small window of time trying to stop this um, terrorist attack from happening. And so, like, he dies a lot. (laughs) And um, I always like these kind of movies. And uh, the ending is actually very satisfying to this. And I won't spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it. But like, look, it's got Jake Gyllenhaal. It's got Michelle Monaghan and Jeffrey Wright's in there. It's a good movie. And if you take the time and watch it, like it's very clever as well. So uh, I recommend it for everybody. Cool movie. Just watched it again recently, actually. I just caught it on, uh, I think it was on actually on HBO. Yeah. So nice. That's what I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. I think you'd like it. I think I would too, the way you talked about it. It is a decent action flick as well. So 
always a club. And Chris, you've you've talked about this one a lot, which is uh, Nine by director Shane Acker, Elijah Wood, Jennifer Connelly, Crispin Glover, Crispin, Christopher Plummer, Martin Landau, John C. Riley, to name a few. It's a feature from 2009. Tell us about it. Uh, so this is also a Christmas movie, and the reason why is because nine reindeer, right? So we have nine uh, steam sack people, so I think it correlates pretty well. The whole idea there's of There's not this, nine at the end. There's not. There's not. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. The, um, uh, so like, I saw this movie in theaters when it came out, and I loved it. I, I worked in a movie theater when this came out. The, uh, mm-hmm. the, the then... The then uh, the then girlfriend, not wife. She did not like this movie. She thought it was stupid. But uh, I really enjoyed this. This uh, this movie. It's a alternate nineteen nineteen forties um, timeline where war takes like, war and artificial intelligence kind of like destroys the entirety of the planet and all humanity. And the only thing that are left are these these, these steam sack people, and they're all numbered and they all have different purposes. And things happen to them along the way. They're trying to overcome and defeat the uh, what's called the brain, which stands for something that I can't remember. But it's um, visually, it's a it's a CGI movie. It's not it's not like for young kids, but it, you could you could watch it. It's like PG thirteen or like high PG is what I would put it at. You can watch this film. It's visually for what they did in two thousand nine. It was it was very cool to see the stuff on screen. The story is interesting. There's a lot of interplay and a lot of hidden meanings within this uh, with each of the uh, the steam sack people that you uh, go on this journey with. And I don't know, like this movie is for what it was in two thousand nine. It flew under the radar. It's not a very high rated film like across like critics, but I, it holds a special place for me. I think this movie is way better than than it gets uh, like noted for. And I don't know. I think you should watch if you haven't. If you're into animated films that kind of have like a darker theme, that that's what this one will give you. I agree. It's uh, I think it's it's one of those movies that you could argue probably is not a kids animated movie that's not for kids pretty much at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, it, like I say, a little bit older is fine, but I I, I wouldn't show this to my eight year old at this point. It's I better think than a lot of several the, Terminator movies. I, I knew you were gonna say it, that. It, I knew it. I knew Terminator it. Dark Fate probably doesn't come close to this one. Honestly. It's definitely better than Terminator Genesis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely, I'm, it doesn't take much though. You know and saying? anything is better than Terminator Genesis. <laughs> I've look. I'm Terminator guy. And I'm gonna admit that. I'm that that movie hurt me, but so did all of them after two. They all hurt me in in ways that I don't even want to talk about. That it's just inappropriate for me to even bring up because it's just bad. But it's like his worst relationship that he just can't bring up over and yeah. over again. <laughs> I dude, I'm telling you, and I will say it again and again and again, and I will take this to my grave. I think some of those directors that have done movies in the Terminator franchise that that screwed it up for look, McG just made Family Switch. That's his punishment is making awful Netflix movies now. Oh like, yeah, he, keep he, getting paid he millions paid of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, he's not making anything that matters, I guess. But I but it matters to him. More sure, it matters to his I'm... fucking bills. <laughs> 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 now, maybe that was too harsh for me to say, but that is the caffeine nah. in my body now. So no, he's laughing at That's you. That's your weird again, he's mixture paid. of diet coke and black coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. But uh, yeah, I agree. It's uh, that nine is better than at least four of the Terminator films. So yeah, mm-hmm. some yeah, kind I think of that's a, fair. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right, uh, available if you have diet. If you sorry, if you have HBO Max, Die Hard. If you have, if you have Diet Coke, yes. I was gonna say if you have Die Hard. Um, oh, okay, if, okay. If you subscribe to H to, to now Max, which I hate calling it Max, I dude, that's so stupid. It's like I calling agree. Twitter X. It just it feels it feels weird. It'll it's just you'll dumb, but it it's years. it's less of a no. I won't. <laughs> Well, hold on. I'm never calling it X. <laughs> well, ha- let, let, let me ask you a question. You're you work at HBO, and, and it's your job to you know come yes or no to this name. I don't think it even. Why would you not? Why would you want something that doesn't have your like HBO yeah. in the name? Yeah. Why would you want your brand on the name of your item? That's you know what I mean. I, that's it's my like, point. It's like why would you want? It's like it's it's like it's like Hulu changing their name to Lou, like their app name to Lou. Like, why would you do that? You want everyone to know it's Hulu, right? It, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. But if you subscribe to, to Max, you have access to Die Hard, Source Code, and Nine. All very good movies. All very good, weird, kind of action-y movies in a, in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some trailers. Let's talk about If with Ryan Reynolds, John Krasinski, Kaylee Fleming, Steve Carell, Louis Gossett Jr., Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Maya Rudolph, John Stewart, Sam Rockwell, Sebastian Maniscalco. Christopher Maloney, Richard Jenkins, Aquafina, Vince Vaughn, Bobby Moynihan, Fiona All Shaw. Right, stop it. Yeah, we, we get it. We get, stop we get it. it. I was excited. That's a huge cast, man. It is. Sure. So uh, I have a sinking feeling that this is a musical. 
a lot more than what they lead in the trailer. Yeah, I you're probably okay, not wrong yeah, about that. I could see that. I could see that. No, no, here's the thing. I'm not saying that that's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I think they're hiding it. Why would they hide it though? Why did they hide it for Wonka? Uh, well, yeah. Okay, what's well, so, okay? Hold on. I get that because when, when when you hear musical as a it has a negative a, connotation as a parent and as someone who has to suffer through a kids movie already mm-hmm. you don't want to hear musical you do you really not want to yeah. do that and, I get that. like I, nope, I it makes sense yeah yeah right. and like look that's not a knock on Wonka and I'll talk about that here in a little bit yeah, but yeah. like we have a lot of movies now that have a lot more musicals so okay another another thing is like we have another Mean Girls movie coming out yep and here's the thing if you watch the trailer. They don't tell you that this is a musical. Yeah, you got to. They do that out. not tell you that. So we also have. Know, a, I don't we, know why we've, we've we've had the Taylor Swift and the Beyonce, and, and I mean we also I mean the Color Purple, a huge a huge yeah, musical. But, yeah, but the whole Taylor Swift Beyonce thing is different though. That, that that's, that's not a, a concert. That, that is sure, a music sure. concert. You know you know what you're getting into there. You could walk into something like Wonka or something like you know Mean Girls and not know what you're in for. Like I would I would argue we'll talk about Zen Wonka. I would argue Wonka is the exception, but um, I can see what you're saying. Absolutely, it does have a negative mm-hmm. connotation, and people would generally tend to they would choose to stay away from it. Had they yeah, the people option. stay away from it yeah. just by just for that reason. Yep. The, not everyone, but like there is a there is a portion of of the money you would make that would go away because it's it's got musical. Well, it's like you know about a year ago we watched the movie with uh, Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell on Apple TV, the Spirited yeah. one. And here's the thing. That's a full blown musical, it right? Is. And they don't really hide it, but like it's not one of the things that they really put out when it first came out. Like now that it's out, it's like, ah, here's the musical, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, here's the thing. Ryan Reynolds isn't bad in these kind of things. Yeah. So with you know, Well, Spirited, I also would I also would say Spirited is kind of the because it's not the if you look, if if they sing a song and, and then they sing another, you can just simply pick up your remote and just okay, not for me, goodbye. Like you, you've lost nothing but twenty sure. minutes. In theatrically, you've lost, you know, fifteen bucks time, babysitter pay, wh- whatever the case may be. You've you've lost that time, but sure, I understand that. But I, I mean, other comments about if is, I mean, as as parents, does this appeal to you for your kids? Sure, yeah, seems I, fine. I'm excited for this. I think this looks like it's going to be. I, I think it's going to be good. I think this is going to be a fantastic movie. I'm I'm really excited for if. I would agree. I hope so, God, I'm not wrong, Chris. Let me ask you: Do you think your kids will dig this movie? I think yes, yeah. I think it. I think to some capacity, this is going to hit with one of my kids at least. I don't know which one <laughs> at this point. You know, like at least one kid's going to be like that movie was great and fifty percent be... happy. Yeah, nice. exactly. This is all you can ask for. No, like, that, that, that's all I got to shoot for. Right? Yeah, it's you it. know that, that that is a positive batting average. So it, it's it, yeah. I think my kids are at least some of my kids are going to like this. I think it'll be great. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see this movie myself. So Roger, what about uh, your daughter? I'm on board with if. So yes. I don't think she'll care about it at all. That's fair. Um, That's fair. But I mean, she's a little bit older now too. Mm, so yep. You know, but like I mean, like this is you know, it's got a good cast, a good director. I mean, it's got Krasinski, which is a str- it's a different kind of movie for him to direct mm-hmm. because like, look, you know what he's famous for? Like, yeah, big movie. You know mm-hmm. about alien invasion? Just saying. <laughs> you know, uh, well, so Emily Blunt. Though, he, like, he, so he, is his wife though, Emily Blunt. Yeah, I mean, he's earned my viewing though, right? Yeah, like, no, absolutely. That's, until he does something wrong. I'm going to see whatever he has with a positive mindset going. Sure, in. And that's fine. Period. I have he no reason to. Yet. I guess the, I have no reason not to watch this. If it's, you know, I'm just he, stating it's a different yeah. side of him. We have yeah. yet to see oh, yeah. on screen. But it's a good. It's a good um, point to make, and it'll be interesting to see if he's able to nail this one as well. Mm. Uh, let's Did talk he about make Animal Crackers, though. No, he starred in Animal oh, okay, Crackers. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, gotcha, 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 gotcha. That movie hurt you, Chris, really bad. <laughs> that movie hurt Five, you. But that movie is. <laughs> The movie's bad, brother. The, the movie's is. abyssal it is is the abyss incarnate. I just well, I it's, can't. It's from Netflix, so what else do you expect? Hey oh. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the let's talk about Land of Bad, not the land, but Land of Bad with Russell Crowe, Milo Ventimiglia, and Liam Hemsworth, one of the discount Hemsworth brothers, Ricky Whittle, Luke Hemsworth, the other discount Hemsworth brother. Um, it's a feature. Are they <laughs> all discount except for Chris? Is, yeah, is look, that how that look, works? Look, Chris is the star. Or is there like a weighted scale I love, for Hemsworth? I, I would love for you to say that to one of the to, to one of the discount brothers' faces. Though, you think you other I mean? people? You think the other people haven't also said that as a joke? Because I bet you Chris says it to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's that, that's kind of hilarious. To be clear, Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, not Chris in the podcast, right? Because correct, I never... correct, correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You're um, a coward, so uh, I'm. I'm and I'm what 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 I I'm self self preserving. 
because uh, they're huge. No. Yeah. Good. I'm behind a microphone in a basement in Ohio. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> they'll, they'll never find this place. <laughs> All um, of a sudden, one day, the door just flies open and fucking Liam Hemsworth beats my ass. <laughs> Look, deservedly so. <laughs> I'm being like, I just yeah, want to see Grayson. I, I brought this upon myself. I just want to see Grayson like across the table from, from Liam Hemsworth and go, you know, you're the discount brother, right? I just, just I, I don't, I mean, just I throws wouldn't. him through the wall. Just hard, hard cuts the black and it's just Grayson's funeral happening. That's after, all it would be. after he takes his shirt off and he has all the abs and I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about the Russell Crowe involvement and, and, yeah. and Milo Ventimiglia. Like, those are two pretty house old name stars at least oh, yeah. i mean russell's kind of still hanging on i don't i don't know if i could still call him what he once was i thought Look, at, that dude can one, make a let hope exorcist movies i'm gonna watch them all i'm just <laughs> telling you that right now <laughs> and i'm here for it and, and i still think roger's take on your yeah that he's gonna make sure you have a bad day unhinged <laughs> that was a pretty decent movie too though for the first one back from it was okay Pedro's. it was okay I, I would go as far as to say pretty decent. So it got COVID points for sure. Sure, absolutely. But I mean, it had look. Yeah. They had the balls to put it out when no one else did. Got to give them points true. for that. So like, so this movie, like, I won't say discount Hemsworth, but I will say discount behind enemy lines is what this feels like. Oh, feels okay, like, fair. Yeah. So like, and and this movie, I said this to Roger while we were watching the the uh, the trailer. This feels very B movie. This this feels like those Mel Gibson movies that have been coming out like recently that are kind of like they're like. Like, was that hurricane movie or whatever? Like it hurricane feels, heist. Yeah. It feels no, no, like no, no, like, no. Like force of nature. And like, yeah, there's like dragged across concrete with Vince. Fox. Yeah. There's several. Hey, like, dragged yeah. across concrete is an excellent movie, by the way. I'm not saying good. it can't it's be. We, the, we, there are B movies that stand that, that shine. Right. But like this feels like that production wise, trailer wise, all that kind of thing. Sure. So when it's got that weird gradient over the mm-hmm. trailer, that's how you instantly can tell, okay, this is, this was B movie budget kind of, kind of deal going on. Sure. So. I think that's what we have here. It could be good, but it, like I said, it feels like 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 discount behind enemy lines kind of thing going mm. on. So we'll see. You're not you're, you're, you're not wrong, but yeah, I, yeah I, I'm not expecting great things from Land of Bad. It looks generic, especially towards the end. It feel it has that generic feel to it. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I mean, it's it'll it'll be released theatrically. I have no doubt. I like how they in one of the action shot trailer cuts. It has it just has. <laughs> Uh, John Goodman uh, version of what's his name? Russell, Russell Crowe. Crow. <laughs> yelling, like busting through a door, running down the hallway. It's like, oh man, that's his action shot for the movie. He's too. beefy, <laughs> beefy boy. He's, he's he's a chunky boy these days. Yes. Um, let's talk about Miller's Girl with Jenna Ortega, Martin Freeman, and Bashir Salahuddin. Now, real quick about Jenna Ortega is a kind of a Jenna Ortega and who's the other girl? I, I forget. Both the Scream Girls. They've been taken off the last remaining Scream film. Mm-hmm. For 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 political takes, which is fine, but you're gonna take away your two main characters on movie seven of seven. I wouldn't say main; I'd say only. Did they take yeah, fair. them away, or did yeah, they no. step down? No, no, they were what? removed. They did not voluntarily step down. Huh. So, well, here's the thing: I thought Jenny Ortega stepped away because she had other projects going on. But I know the uh, Melissa Barrera. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, Melissa Barrera. Yeah, you know. Well, I, I, I think Jenna Ortega anymore. stepped away. I don't know what's the right or wrong thing you're allowed to say anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. well, no, I don't pretend to. no, no, no. But, but it, it was something political. But I think Jenna Ortega stepped away because they got rid of Barrera for whatever political take she had. Hmm. And I yeah. just think that's a because they were actually they were actually good. Like Scream had come back from awful to be good again. It's like how many franchises are able to do that? I mean, obviously not my Terminator franchise, so... No, not at that's, all. That's Nothing dead in the DC universe. Yeah, yeah, that's dead and buried now. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastards. <laughs> anyway, Poor so bastards. Miller's Girl with Jenna Ortega, Martin Freeman. What are we thinking with this? This, You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Gone Girl. It reminds me of that movie with Ben Affleck who... Um, you remember with Ben Affleck and uh, what's yeah, yeah, yeah. what's I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we we've seen this movie yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, it definitely leans more towards the uh, I think more towards the Ben Affleck one more than more than Gone Girl, just because there's no there's no like weird murder mystery to solve along the way with like yet. a lot of paparazzi. Yeah, that's true. Not yet, but I, I like yeah, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman, I think, is damn good, and so is Jenna Ortega. So I'm I'm excited to see what what could be a very good kind of thriller movie so martin I'm, freeman does not age either he true, doesn't true, true. he's one of those he's getting more handsome i don't understand <laughs> it martin freeman but now he's like fucking handsome. jack too like how did that happen <laughs> yes indeed yeah, i mean like look i i just hope it's good yeah like the i mean here's the thing it's not exactly an original premise here like we've seen this kind of movie before of course so as long as it's entertaining 
you know, that's really what we're looking for, right? I yeah. mean, anymore because of Netflix, I just a movie can be bad. I just hope it doesn't waste my time. Which, Chris, I'll give you credit. That's kind of your thing is mm-hmm. bad movies can be bad just as long as it doesn't. The biggest, the yeah. worst thing a movie can do is waste your time. Like, like time like, is your like, most yes, precious yes, currency, yes, sir. Yes, yes, it is. So check those out on our uh, social media if you haven't seen them. If Land of Bad and Miller's Girl, all big movies coming in 2024. Well, not maybe not Land of Bad, but Miller's Girl and If are some. I mean, it's coming in 2024. Mm-hmm. It's true. Let's, gentlemen, talk about Wonka, Wonka, the movie of the week. And let's get some particulars out of the way. So box office is done. I can close that. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes. What do you guys think the Rotten Tomato for Wonka is? If you haven't I seen it's it. Pretty, I bet it's pretty high. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. It feels it's like well. it's in the 80s. It's 84 for Tomato Meter Ooh. and audience score of 90. All right. Now, well, here's, my, so yeah. here's my bone to pick with, with Wonka. I've seen Wonka and I've also recently rehashed Willy Wonka and the Char- and the Chocolate Factory. I the don't original, think, not the, like the, the weird original Johnny Depp one. No, no, no. I don't. I don't consider the Johnny that. Depp one has its charm. I. It's weird. It's, it's weird, weird, and it's. But... I wouldn't. I just. That's kind of the bastard stepchild. I wouldn't. But here's the thing with Wonka: is going into it, Timothy Chalamet, the way he looks, even in the trailer, even him from the first screenshot we got, you definitely could tell they were. This was a prequel, and he's supposed to be a younger version of Gene Wilder. Absolutely supposed to be that. Now going now going that going in is that's a pretty daunting task. That might be one of the most impossible tasks Hollywood's ever put forward for an actor. With especially someone like Timothy Chalamet. Gene Wilder You're is You're right because he can't look young and handsome. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's not yeah. About looking, that was a real stretch for old difficult. Tim. <laughs> it's not it's not about looking young and handsome. It's about getting the man- the, the mannerisms down and the like the Oh no, I'm sure that was tough too. I'm just it's, saying, a lot, it's a lot easier to learn how to speak the words than it is to be young and handsome. But also, knowing knowing that Wonka is a prequel to the original film, again, you 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 have challenges going in. And I had my I had a list of things I was looking for when I wasn't looking for. I, just, I don't want to turn this into what I would have done, but there's a gray area for for me. I, I have a lot of I have a lot of bones to pick, and I had a lot of great things to say about it, but. As we're, as we're doing now is first impressions. My, my first impression was it's a solid movie. There's a ton of musical in this. I'm not sure how people will take that. Um, for, for me, it was fine because it, it all goes narratively in. Most of the stuff that I was like, whoa, well, wait a minute, comes later in the film. So those are my first impressions is I want to talk about stuff. But it's okay. Um, I don't think it's Oscar worthy, but it's okay. What about you guys? Well, so here's the thing. I don't. I don't think it was ever meant to be Oscar worthy. Now, I you know, first impression. I will tell you, and I'm not surprised by it, but it is a lot more musical than what they advertise it as. Now, like, look. I guess when you have a movie like Willy Wonka or like have Wonka, you know, there's going to be a musical aspect of it. So you know for a fact that there's going to be some music, some of this, some of that. But like, there's a lot of music here, like repeatedly, you know, song, small part, another song. And here's the thing. It's never bad, but it's like that is heavy influence here. And I honestly think they do a pretty good job with the musical numbers. So like, it's fine for me. Like, I like this movie. Like, I thought it was cute. So, well, it, like, I don't know. See, the my brain wants to shut off when the music stuff happens. And but I just I have no interest in musicals and, and like. Okay, I don't I, I I don't have any interest in like the theater musical kind of thing. And okay. there are times in this where like where like the theater definitely comes out, like the whole theater acting very like it's so animated with like with like hand movements and hand gestures or you know things that are said in certain ways and it's because there are theater people working on this and that's and they're probably directed that way or that's less like just like their their natural, you know, instinctive acting. But like that is what I don't like in these kinds of films. So there is some of that, but other than that, like like the premise of the movie and everything that, that we get to see, like the ride it takes you on is still a good ride, even with that in there. If you're like kind of like me and like you don't like that like that kind of thing in your movies. So a real quick note about that's why it's on a lot of its own merits. I, I agree with you. And a lot of that's why I said I think Wonka might be the exception to what you said earlier, because like I, I think it's hard to go into Wonka not ex- not knowing there's going to be musical numbers. Some music at least throughout. yeah. Um, yeah, the, the first one well, didn't. No, it, it had well, a lot. But though, go go ahead. Because well, like, well, because like the original Gene Wilder one, there wasn't any. Was there musicals outside of the Oompa Loompa songs? 
Yes. And and the boat thing. Yeah, there's a couple of songs. Is there? I I, could, I, I couldn't like really. Like, there's not as there. much music as this, but there's there's a good bit. Okay. Yeah. it's like, pretty consistent through it. Yeah, and all the Oompa Loompa songs are pretty short in the original. They're they like are. they're like a minute yeah. and a half, and then they end up with doop dee do, and then on on with the movie. But like, there's got the I've got the golden ticket. Like when my they, butt yeah. hole. I, I don't think that's <laughs> that's what they do when they bend down. Uh, <laughs> um, but that's why I said that I don't. I think Wonka might be the exception to what you're saying earlier, mm-hmm. but. All right, so Roger, so you guys have you got anything you want to say about first impression before we move into the actual movie? No, that's I'm good. Oh, All right, yeah, so some good. particulars: Timothy Chalamet, who never disappoints; Calla Lane, Keegan Michael Key, Olivia Coleman, Rowan Atkinson, Hugh Grant, Sally Hawkins, Matt Lucas, and N- Natasha Rothwell. This is uh, written by Paul King and directed by Paul King. Roger, that is, um, I think, pertinent right. information for you because Paddington, your love for Paddington. Yes, it's a good movie, both of them. Roger does not like Paddington. Hush. <laughs> he hates Paddington. Films. All right. So um, this is, of course, the characters by uh, Roald Dahl, the, 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 the Roald Dahl, Roald Dahl the, the book. So, Roger, what's um, Wonka about? Willy Wonka. Got him. Fiend. So no credits. more importantly, what's Wonka about, Roger? So, I mean, like, look, this is the beginning of Willy, right? Like Willy. transient homeless man getting off a ship (laughs) you know rolling into some unknown country an unknown town um with a little bit of magic and uh yeah i mean here's the thing his magic is is dark it's dark magic Mm -hmm. for sure like he traded his soul for these powers in some way absolutely oh my god (laughs) all right you don't think that's accurate (laughs) Did you not watch this film, sir? <laughs> I think it's weird, but sure. I mean, that is sure the dark magic of Wonka. But I mean, sure. like, look, this is him trying to break through in the chocolate world, and you know, stuff happens to him. Well, like, I mean, okay, more on the dark magic thing, real quick. Let's think about the first film. You don't think there's dark magic at? Oh no, no, you know I know, know I mean? it. It permeates that place. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like that like, factory is haunted. It's fully, sir. I mean, like his, like the dark lineage of his powers fully seeps in in that movie. Right, yeah. like he's at the end, at the, like he's searching for his successor to yeah. pass down. He's his at dark the arts. end of his life cycle. Yeah, <laughs> he needs a new, a new, a new set of souls. He, he needs a new host. <laughs> <laughs> the the Wonka in the long line of Wonkas, there's only one. Wonkas. <laughs> he just keeps resetting himself. <laughs> I mean, fair, but I, this is all canon, by the way. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing about this movie. Again, one of the things I want to talk about is. Knowing what you have going in, and this this is the story that they choose to tell. That's what I'm perplexed with. It's like the same thing about the Lord of the Rings. Like this is this is the story you're telling on season when you when when you have all the all the time before the Ring trilogy picks up. You you choose this story to tell in one season of a show. That's the same way I feel with this. Is you you choose to tell me the story of Wonka's kind of legal battles with the other chocolatiers and becoming the premier chocolate maker in this fake made up town that doesn't really exist. This is the story you choose to tell me to well to go along with the other the other masterfully made film. I think the I like how you keep ignoring the fact that another one exists. The um like this telling and like you like you said the legal battle and what he has to go through for that I th- those are all just vessels to tell this story is all that is like mm-hmm. like I don't think those are the f- those are not the focus they're kind of the joke of the f- movie and they- they're even treated as such like those villains are never taken seriously and they never take themselves seriously they're very they're very jokey and tongue in cheek it's and, corny uh, yeah exactly and, and and the movie knows that the writing knows that and the actors are playing them know that sure sure all the way through oh well, sure so but like, that's, all, that's still the story though yeah it's it's a part of the story no i think it's a family story yeah the story is the family and and the friends and like the friends that like you know well, sure them. i i totally understand become that become family yeah but huh? i mean i think they become the family yeah, so yeah what, I, I, that, that's more what it is what am i ignoring you said if i'm ignoring the other one this is not this it's, are you talking about the 2005 Johnny Depp one? Yeah. This, but this isn't. This movie doesn't talk to that one. As far as this movie is concerned, that one does not exist. Technically, this could be the prequel to that movie. I think you're playing with no, because Timothy Chalamet is definitely meant to be a younger Gene Wilder. He's not meant to be the other Wonka. Well, what about you, Roger? Weigh in. Which 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 one? Which one do you think is? There's no right answer to that. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I mean. I, and also, mm-hmm. also, I mean. I if I had to lean one way, it's the original, not the the weird Johnny Depp one. Because here's the thing, nobody really cares about the weird Johnny Depp one. 
it's so like that's... Well, okay so it's interesting that in the johnny depp one the focus was on like the fact that like you know he was trying to bring back like the happy memories of his father right sure or, you know, things, not having a father and like, he was trying to like replace that where this one just mother focuses on the mother so you could you know, like you could almost see that there's like that there's an evolution of the character directly between those two films in that way if you if you if you sandwich those two together at that point so I, I, I'm not I'm not hard fighting for for the Johnny Depp one. It's not it's not as good of, of a movie to either of the other two in any way, shape or form. But like I, I just I think this movie stands on its own two legs without the other film at this point. Like 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 Wonka has, you know, Willy Wonka's story has hit enough people across enough generations now where it's recognizable the second you see it. Sure. You know what you're looking at, especially from our generation you know, in order to where like, you know, they throw up this movie and you don't have to think about the old one anymore. You just know the character. And now you get to see of course, like, this version of, of how he came to be. You know, the only other like way to see this prequel like style film is showing him actually getting the chocolates and all these things out in the jungles and the islands and all that. Like, like the seven years he was on the ship, I guess, is like the only other way to like to like tell this story. Right. Yep. You know, show him discovering the Oompa Loompas and all that other stuff. Well, I think the other the other thing that goes into this, too, is why they picked this timeline is because, like, legitimately, would you be surprised a few years from now the if there's one. another? Yeah, that's exactly. right. Yeah. That, so, that, like, that, that's, that's the thing is you start here mm -hmm. and you see the groundwork and, like, look, eventually you have to see him how he enslaves all the Oompa Loompas. Oh, exactly. Like, that has and, to happen. And, well, I, I mean, like, and they, they, they already teased the factory. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they showed they gave they you, gave you the, yeah, like the, yeah. the, the like the DIY show, yeah. like here's that, what it'll look like. That's what I want to see, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, because that's what we saw growing up was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. How many industrial accidents do they have built in that thing? I mean, if it happens to Oompa Loompas, are they accidents or is it just, is it just cost? <laughs> that's <laughs> awful. Expenditure, probably. <laughs> that's what I mean. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> God. Um, question for you. So the, the original where does the original take place like where tell we me don't what, know we, we talked so, about this a we, we, me and chris were talking about this before we started here so like as far as i remember and i'll look i'm not going to say that i've watched the original yeah. charlie and the chocolate factory recently um i don't ever remember them talking about where it's based right yep i also always just you know, being an American, assume that it was in America because they don't speak English. They speak American. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like American. Well, that's, they do. <laughs> but here, like in this one, like you have some weird hybrid of like the northern UK with a lot of German influence. Mm -hmm. And like I told Chris, maybe something that you guys didn't pick up when at the end where we see the library, which is like a badass looking library, like it doesn't say library on it. It says Biblioteca. Mm -hmm. That's Spanish, sir. Yeah, I didn't catch that. You brought that up. And, like, yeah, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, and, and then there's a castle. Like, yeah, like w when I saw the original, you know, I feel like this is in like Germany. Yeah, see, for like, real. Yeah, like like when I watched watched, uh, which Willy makes Wonka. sense with the chocolate lineage because like German chocolate mm -hmm, tears exactly. are like that. Yep, that's, that's big. a big thing. But like when as a kid, I always thought this was in Europe, right? Like it seems like like post World War Two Europe is what it feels like, especially like with like with like uh, Charlie and his family. They're, it's everything, everything's run down. They're very poor. That felt very much to me like 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 a, a European you know nation. Gotcha. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I mean, I always thought it took place in the UK somewhere, but I think Roger's right. I think it's supposed to be in North America somewhere, like a nondescript. I always had the idea it was in like New England area, mm -hmm. like Boston, Boston yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah. like that. Very, yeah, yeah, like very, very dark and cold area yep. of the United, very gray area of the United States. Yeah, yep. that, that that makes sense in a way that like most people like kind of had that British accent. Shit, that could be anywhere in Canada. True, yeah, I'm honestly. sure. Yeah, yeah, but 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 again, we 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 land on the castle at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Which then it's like you know. And and like like we said, chocolate's lineage is definitely you know European, it's middle European. Yeah, so it's well, like I, I didn't maybe that from this is. one. I got this one like kind of a kind of an England meets. Mm -hmm, yeah. Well, was, I always got the idea strange. like where they're selling the chocolates is supposed to be like Paris. Yeah, like I always got that from okay. this movie anyway. But like everything else, it's very ambiguous. Mm -hmm. And I th here's the thing. Does that really matter? Probably no, not. No, I don't. But if it matters, like, it, it's if it interesting matters, to think it. about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, you're. Yeah, I don't think it really matters because it's it's all just fictitious anyway. So, mm -hmm. and they were very careful in the in the 1971 film to not tell you like to be 
nondescript about locations at all, except for where, except for where the kids came from, that except for where the golden ticket winners came from. But yeah, I mean, that yeah, yeah. doesn't matter at all. I mean, anyway, n- nothing mattered. So what mattered was, you know, the, the tour of the factory and, and how these, you know, what happened to these people. And so, I mean, it's awful. The murders. The, the haunted house. The souls being given to the Wonka house. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But <laughs> the house of Wonka. I mean, there's some things that I thought was a little too tongue in cheek. Like, for example, the, the whole laundry thing. I thought they went a little too hard in that because in Charlie's mom in the first in the 71, she is the one she laundries one of her many jobs to, to put food on the table. I thought that was a little maybe too much. I never made that correlation. Yeah, I never, but, never felt that. But I mean, now that you've said it, I do remember that. But like, do you think that was like like a homage thing to the first one, or do you think that's more of a laundry is an easy thing to work with? Well, on like, it's uh, on like a theater stage. It's kind an of thing. easy thing to me. I think it's an easy thing to portray as like something that is a necessary thing that has to be done in those areas, but also is still a shitty job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, look. A lot of work goes into this, you know, slaving over hot water and steam, and nobody wants. To nobody this, really yeah. wants to be the person doing this. That's oh, but the kind I of mean, vibe that I, I mean, I think that the, the laundry thing was a major because she was slaving away doing other people's laundry in the other huh. film. I really do think that's got to be okay. part of it. And, and I, I do love how be. Willie shows up and is there for like fifteen minutes. I'm like, you guys, let me just do some magic shit. Let here. me automate this. I'll show you why you're not going to have any jobs in forty years. Yeah. You know, like, I'll, I'll show you how things get automated. He here basically you go. AI'd this. He's <laughs> <laughs> just like, here you go. I don't know why you guys are still typing code. <laughs> Idiots. It's true. And I, Slugworth was one of the. Slugworth was the guy who tried to get people to steal the um, Everlasting Gobstopper. And that Slugworth, oh, okay. was, Slugworth was one of the people, one of the three chocolatiers. Hmm. So I thought that was kind of. That's obvious. That's an obvious, you know, that's a callback. Modest, sure. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Lineage. Mm-hmm. And there's a and there's there's a lot of others too. However, I think the, the 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 character, despite my like wanting it to be different, was I think pretty much in line with the character we got before. I think Chalamet version. does a good job. Yeah. Man. So like, uh, here's the thing: he's charming. Yeah. He and, uh, and especially in this role, where like, you know, he sings well enough. You know, yeah. he's good enough to like. You know, you can't say you can really outact him. Like we know what he can do, yeah. And like the conversations he has with like Noodle and like those kind of things, like those they, they feel authentic. They, they feel genuine. Yeah, they they yeah. really do. And it's like, look, is it a little bit corny and is it a little bit like off the wall? Sure, but I mean, we're watching a Willy Wonka movie. Like mm-hmm. none of it's outside of what I'd be like. Ah, oh, this is unbelievable shit. Yeah. I mean, like, look, 95% of this movie is unbelievable shit. I mean, honestly. And it just has to look cool and be fun. Yeah, honestly, the, the, this movie gets the furthest away from, like, feeling like it's like, like the movie it's supposed to be in the third act. Like, 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 and it's only because of the weird, you know, drowning in chocolate murder that's going to happen. Well, you know, I mean? you know, we went, for, we transitioned from the arson <laughs> to <laughs> the murder. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah, true. Yeah. And yeah. with a, with a deep shaded cover up of the Catholic Church, yeah. which is whoa, that's brother. A, that, that's a deep cut. If, <laughs> that if nobody gets that. That is real deep. Yeah, like, well, it's it's just it's very strange that it's very strange. That's what they chose. Like again, it's like why? Oh no, that's intentional. No, it's, <laughs> that's, no, it's no. Church, the bad guy. I I know it's intentional. It's just yeah. a strange <laughs> choice for a kids movie. What's supposed to be a kids movie? Well, anyway. here's the thing. Like this is a warning to kids. Well, this is one of the scenarios. Though, like, look, when you were a little kid, right? And, and I know it's hard to you really remember how you felt like the first time you watched Charlie and Chocolate Factory. But like, if we watch that movie now, like Chris, have your kids ever seen the original? No. Okay, so imagine watching it with them now for the first time. You're going to notice so much more stuff oh, that yeah. is geared directly towards the adults mm-hmm. that the kids aren't going to understand. But it's like that Shrek syndrome. Yeah, like, yep. like, look, this is made for everybody, and they laugh at the same things at the same time for different for reasons. Different reasons. Yeah. Like, look, that happens in the original. And, mm-hmm. like, look, there are reasons why people make those kind of references because only certain people are supposed to get it. And it's innocent enough where nobody's going to really be mad about it. Yeah, exactly. But, like, look, that correlation is there. Yep. It's there for a reason. And yeah, look, you're not that's wrong. Good, that's good writing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. True. I don't disagree and like, look, with you. You didn't have to make like an A-plus script here. You you know, and they don't. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look, does this movie have problems? Sure. Plenty of them. But like, for what it is, I don't know if it ever really makes a bit of difference. Well, you, you just said something, Roger, I think that I think 
majorly strikes a chord with me. And but we we didn't do the meta the Metacritic, which is sixty six. How do you guys feel about the movie you watched and the sixty six on Metacritic? I mean, that's that's pretty good for a movie for a kids musical movie. I think that's actually well. Good. See, yeah. I wouldn't say kids. I would say family. 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 Yeah, that's I would say different. family. Yeah, there is a different family, distinction family, in that. Family, family. So what, Roger, you just said is it's just gotta it's just gotta be fun. I mm-hmm. I think that's probably true here. Less it's less it has to be a quality, well written, all the all three acts are perfect. Like it's just gotta be fun for people that are watching it. I think well, that's more it, true here than most times. It's not perfect. It's but not. here's the thing. There is nothing glaringly terrible about this movie. Yeah. Especially because like, look, you know, we already had a mini discussion about it. Like, it's not supposed to be believable. You know, we're talking about a little eight inch orange version of Hugh Grant with green hair that you know is stealing candy from him you know like which is a different take on oompa loompas for us sure Mm -hmm. but you know they kind of hash it out and we understand and it it still fits inside that realm and like look people are almost drowned in chocolate does it feel really out of place here no is a little bit darker than what i thought they were going to do sure (laughs) (laughs) but like the, the indent- that, it still fits into this world. The indentured servitude thing was kind of heavy. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure, it was like, yeah, you sure, know, sure. like if you really think about it, it's kind of heavy, but well, it's, so I think I, it all works. I think some of the more interesting questions, especially when you look at a broad spectrum is do does now, I mean, you guys can chime whenever you want, but the costumes, the set design, the lighting, everything, does it feel like it belongs in the, in the, in the Willy Wonka world? I think Willie looks great. Yeah. yeah I, I think, listen, that. that purple, that purple overcoat, fucking dope, brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. It, it's not any different than what he, I mean, it's different, but like it's, it's the same. It's part of the course for what he wore. Sure. In the and yeah. Here's, yeah. It looks but, good. Yeah. You know, listen, his staff, his little walking yeah. stick, love it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The things, his versatile. Cane. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, look, you think that cop's hitting him like that, bro? He's busting out that cane and breaking that guy's <laughs> nose. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I right mean, across so, the bridge of the nose, sir. That's some of the stuff that I, I mean, that's that's important is to, to match the look and the feel of the one decades earlier. I think that's super important, which the one in 2005, I, mean, I don't think I don't think was super successful with, to be honest with I you. Don't know. Cat Williams would have, been, would have been proud of his outfit. So I think sure. Fine. <laughs> sure. Good reference. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that is, that God is damn. Reference. <laughs> yep. um, I mean, I think that fits. Let's talk about the mother, the Sally Hawkins flashback, the mom character for one second. Let's talk about her bringing her into kind of be Wonka's motivation for all of this heartwarming necessary. I think she, I think that is pretty important given the story being told here. I think it's necessary. I mean, I get it to me, to me, it doesn't matter, but like, I don't know. I don't have anything to draw a line to that. Like personally. So it's like, okay. I mean, I get the reason it's fine. It fits, but like, it's nothing that I would ever like, like, pull up as like a as like as like a highlight of the film you know what i mean but i i can see why other people would 100%. well I, I will make a statement about this so you know we we joked honestly about willie being a dark magician right but like here's the one thing the mother stuff actually does and the thing where like he clearly has some magical powers of some type mm-hmm. like it humanizes him you know like you get to see him with his family and like when or with his mom and when he was truly happy mm-hmm. you know because like look He's basically chasing that feeling ever since his mom is gone, right? He's trying to get back to her, trying to make sure that, you know, his, because like he has this weird, weird feeling, weird dream that, you know, when he finally makes it, that his mom's going to be there. Look, you know, they don't, they don't explicitly go out here and say it during the show, but like his mom's dead, right? Oh, yeah. Clearly. He did, bro. And, you know, he's just trying to get that feeling, you know, it would make him feel so much better, so much happier to be able to get to see her again. And like, look, there's a lot of people that feel that way. Like if you had a chance to see somebody that passed away one more time, you would do anything to do that. Right. Yep. A lot of people would. And like, that's very humanizing for somebody who clearly can do just about anything he wants in this world. You know, he can, you know, make stuff, uh, you know, fly, mm-hmm. you know, like a handful of sparkles into somebody else's chocolate, which don't eat that. There were human beings in that. <laughs> don't do that. Maybe, maybe the sparkles like, you know, like, 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 like sanitize the whole time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Food safe sparkles. <laughs> like, look, that was in his butthole. Oh, yeah. Your fascination. And they do actually make a reference about the things being farted out of them later. When they can't <laughs> fly anymore. Yeah. So like, okay. Like, 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 Going from like the the message of like you know of, of the mother and humanizing and stuff like that, like moving on, like 
kind of paralleling that with like kind of like the things on screen. Like, I don't know, like some of the dialogue reminded me that this is a family slash kids, kids movie with mm-hmm. like the whole, you know, like it's going to come out the other end and like to talk about like, you know, farting or pooping out like, yeah. you know, it's, you know, the, the bug or whatever. But like the like watching this movie, I don't think my five year old would have liked this film, but my eight year old would have been like all. Sure. It. I don't think enough happens quick i don't think things happen quick enough and i don't think things are flashy enough for like the young young audience i think like your like your seven to ten year old range will probably really dig this movie kind sure. of thing and like after, as you get older it just varies kid to kid yeah because like yeah you know, like there was enough lol that i was like kind of waiting for the next thing so i can't imagine like like a five or six year old trying to like you know you know upped on you know upped on the cocaine rush that is like movie theater popcorn and sure TV, trying to sit in the theater and watch this movie like that so well it's different but, because the the, the original yeah. charlie was a kid so kids could identify with charlie it, this one is i don't, I don't think he's well, meant no. to be the original one is flashier too the little then the little or the, the the older one is quicker so like it takes time to get going to the factory but once you're in the factory in the first one it goes man it kind of rolls out yeah, yeah and like yeah, sure and the things that I are happening that. are are so like so outlandish once you get to the factory right so like and it's all the cult. murders <laughs> the, the, the soul harvesting mm-hmm. like and like all like everything's colorful and flashy and just in your face Whereas you know this one, it's every, it, it's very muted colors well, most of the way through, and it, like you have like you have song set piece candy, song set piece candy kind of thing happening. Mm-hmm. So it's more formulaic and it's a little more like spread out. Whereas the other one, I think you could get a younger kid to like watch it once you hit a certain point and glue to it. So do you think a giraffe would just let you milk it? I think a giraffe would murder you. Yeah, <laughs> like like there's those things. Like look, you ever you ever seen think. giraffes fight? It's dude, yeah. it's it's wild. Oh yeah, and I mean this here's a like, for like, people the, the whole neck cracking. Like, so like they they thing. roll their necks and like they whip it like a legit like a whip and well, like headbutt each other. With it's it. like it, it's awesome. like you, it's like when you'd pick up a towel and and and, and, and like, whip, like like whip your buddy with it. Yeah, they that's do the, it with their neck. That's the way they. Like, yeah, no, it's mm. yeah, you would die. There's yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Surprising a lot of surprising amount of milking giraffes in this film. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, but it's, it's a little weird and outlandish. But so is did you have that on your Willy Wonka bingo card? Giraffe milking? <laughs> did not, but I did not. You're right. <laughs> I mean, look, somehow it fits in this world, but I didn't see it coming. <laughs> but goddamn, <laughs> that's most of the movie. It didn't fit. I mean, it, I didn't see it coming. That's what most of this movie. I didn't. I just didn't see it coming. I mean, the one thing I thought I want to talk about something I thought was actually really impressive for a mm-hmm. second. Um, you know, I know, I know, ninety nine percent of it's CGI, so don't yeah, yeah. don't hold me to it. But like the scene where like they open the chocolate store, his store, mm-hmm. like I like that whole scene because yeah. it, it was cool. A lot of it was practical. Uh, so, uh, there's there's a good bit of that in there that is also practical mm-hmm. and sure. not CGI, which which, which yeah. is kind of impressive too. Like when he when he's walking like up the spiral road mm-hmm. with the old man, like that just looks yeah. so cool. It did, and like that to me was like as Willy Wonka as mm-hmm. it could be. And like, could, that's what it's all about. Could you imagine being in that time era and walking into that? Store yeah. Like that, dude, that, like, that, that'd be cool to walk into right now. You know Hell I mean? yeah, I mean, would. Like, we know it's possible. Be like, like, this shit is incredible. Back then, bro. You'd be like, this is sorcery in here. You know what I mean? Like, Oh it, no, he'd be burned <laughs> at, at a stake. stake. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. No, okay, yeah, well, it, it, if the first it, one it, was it did look really good on screen. So yeah. if the first one was modern, what like in in the late sixties, early seventies, when the film was released, when does this one take place then? Probably like somewhere in the fifties, maybe the sixties. No, you think? Bro, I get the idea, like the twenties. Yeah, the, I got. The, I think I got way. the idea of the twenties. But he's too oh, the cars. Yeah, maybe with the with the type of cars mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, but like, does it? Does he look that much younger? Is the point? Like, he doesn't look fifty years. Hey, listen, I can believe it's thirty years. Yeah, you uh, say you say say it's nineteen thirty. Yeah, okay, legitimately, it's nineteen thirty. And say the other one set place in like sixty four, sixty five. I can yeah. see a thirty year gap there. Yeah, again, I don't think this is a pr- a direct prequel to the to the other film. No, I think we have to step away from that thought process. This is more like a like like a remake will kind of thing mm-hmm. where like it's it's taking things from the original. And tying those things in in some way, like so, like certain things, but I think they're doing their own thing with this. You know what I mean? Like like I think that's what's happening here. It's I not disagree direct. with you only because of the direct correlation of like, for instance, like the laundry and Slugworth is. I don't. I can't. Like I just disagree for for those reasons. But I'm, I mean, you could be right, but I just don't agree with that. That's just my. Well, the other thing too is because like, look, I you know we we mentioned this a little bit beforehand. Like I would fully expect 
you know, because this is doing fairly well financially mm-hmm. and yeah. critically is, you know, it's most people are considering it a, a good watchable movie, which yeah. is very important anymore. Uh-huh. Um, that I feel like something like this will make a good bit of, you know, get a good bit of time streaming and everything like that. Like this movie will be considered successful. Oh, yeah. Like there's got to be an idea somewhere down the road where there is another one of these films. Oh, yeah. Because like there is so much, even if they're not exactly related, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But like they set the groundwork at the very end of this movie to see that there is more coming. There can be more in this world. And that's the most important part. I think, you know, just the fact that, Hey, he did the character. Well, there's enough story bits to, to make something else. And we can go from there because like, look, just an offshoot of what could be a second story to this is, you know, like his success, you know, and doing all this. This could be a trilogy. If you think about it. Well, you see, well, Go ahead. Well, because like the reason why is because like it's it's known in the first movie that he closed his factory to the public for for a reason for right? a reason yep. yeah so like 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 you could see like the rise of the of, of the factory and then whatever happens to catalyze that you know you know the fact that he closes it to the public the allegations yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> the 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 missing persons they just refer to them as the missing <laughs> so but like like i think that you could i could honestly see them doing like three movies or like a part one part two to like the next film to kind of like wrap the whole thing up because it because of it, it, it being successful and they've already kind of laid that groundwork out sure yeah i actually thought there might have been a chance that this one i thought there might have been a chance with it ended with him like they did a weird thing at the end where they they aged him up a few years and then they it ended with him closing the factory because of all the spies stealing from and then he was going because Slugworth was one of the chocolatiers that was trying to keep him out of the city that he was going to then become friends with and then talk to about well I have a plan I have a plan let's talk like that's how I thought there might have been a chance it would end like that but obviously there's there's a ton of time in between where we're gonna again that was like when you talk about doing a prequel to Willy Wonka, I was like, well, that's the obvious place you go is he had to close the factory. Let's talk about that because people were trying to steal his recipe. That's why he closed the factory. Mm. So I thought, I mean, naturally that's where the prequel was going to be. I didn't know we we're going to go all the way back to the beginning of Wonka being a chocolatier. Yeah, but it, it, it makes sense to kind of like, it's been long enough from like, if, if you're going to tie it anyway to, to, to the wilder one that, you know, it makes sense to kind of like, go to that part of the beginning and you know build something play it out you know show him as the you know starry eyed you know the world's a great place everyone's wonderful kind of thing and then you know if you're going to tell the full story you can kind of break it down to the whole you know kind of recluse doesn't want anybody near him he's paranoid because like the world's kind of hurt him you know for his generosity a couple times so it makes yeah sense. like he got burned yeah you know what yeah. i mean well, I, I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. But there's definitely more story here. Now, even if you go, I mean, even if you go like way past Charlie and Chocolate or Willy Wonka in the Charlie Fa- in the Chocolate Factory, like you go past, so you do a movie based on the uh, the grown up version of Charlie now managing in and, control. Yeah, now we in control, but like his story picks up when like maybe he has a midlife crisis, and then like I, I don't know, but like there is definitely a huge years time span to tell story here whether it's before or after this movie and before the next one or completely after the original there's tons of options here i think yeah but when, when you think charlie and the chocolate factory you don't think of charlie you think of willy wonka well that's so the thing it, it, no but that's the thing it, it, the original was called involve wonka. but the the, the 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 original was called willy wonka and the charlie and the chocolate factory the remake was charlie and the chocolate factory yeah yeah but that's I, what but i like, need no to be clear though but no one cares about charlie no, well, no one cares about the 2005 movie either. That's the whole thing. Is so that's why well, no, I mean people care about that. Yeah. I, I don't think that matters though. I think I, I think just I think they have set up a prominent actor who's who's good at what he does in a in this ro- in a role that can be played multiple times. And and in, in the, the film was successful. It I shares think. enough physical similarities. Yeah, I think that's all they needed for the formula, and they put it out there, and it's working. Well, no, of course that's you know it's. I mean, I, sure. I see what you're saying is uh, that's all they needed, and I, I, but I think you're right about that. Is that's, you know, the loose connections are all you do need. But the thing is, where do you go from here? Do you do another one, or do you just let it go? I mean, if they were to let it go here, there wouldn't be any. We no one would be worse off, right? But like they, 
it's been successful. Like we've said, they've already got him in the role. I'm sure he'd do it again. You know, like, you know, and with that, you know, we've already kind of laid out, you know, possible stories, which make complete sense. So I, I mean, I'm not going to be shocked when I see a Willy Wonka two announcement here in, you know, six months, you well, know what I mean? The like budget for this. What are we, what, what's the Wonka? Hang on. I'll look. Yeah, but like, 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 I'm not going to be shocked when you know Wonka Two is announced or confirmed or whatever. You know what I mean? Especially in the new year and with all the all the strike stuff coming to a close, like you know, we're going to see a lot of slates get changed around and things get announced. You know what I mean? Only well, one twenty five for this. That's surprising. Uh, so maybe there's more practical than we thought. How maybe in the world? How in the world did the killer cost more to make than? Because it's in Netflix. They pay a fifty million dollar tax just to be made by Netflix. <laughs> God yeah. Almighty! But here's the thing: like that's really not even a joke. Yeah, there's like a... everything in Netflix costs legitimately fifty or sixty million dollars more than what you. There's think a lot it of bad green screen in this. There's a lot. There's a lot of bad CGI in this, which we haven't even touched on. But like. I think the movie is for some reason I, I I'm for some reason I'm able to forgive this movie for that stuff. I was talking to Roger about this earlier, but like that's probably why the budget's lower, right? You know, that's why the budget isn't 210. Million. Well, one of, one of the things too, with the budget is besides Timothy Chalamet, there's not anybody here. Now listen, there are plenty of people in here who know who they are, but they're not, you know, big time, you know, I get five, 10 million a movie actors and actresses, yeah. right? Like yeah. they're, they're all people who are very skilled and good at what they there do in this Broadway role. theater. Yeah. Actors in this film, but yeah. like they don't command multiple millions of yeah. dollars to be in it. Yep. So I think you'd be, I, that definitely, I, I, I think that. you'd be surprised about Olivia Coleman. She's, she's a multiple Oscar winner. I think you'd be sure about her. And maybe Hugh Grant. I, I don't know what I, I can't imagine. He's you know like a five million. Well, here, so here's the thing with Hugh Grant he, though. Hugh Grant never had to come to work. True. Like he had to record his lines. They had to map his face, and that's it. He <laughs> never he never had to interact with a human being during this at all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like Tony Stark in some of those Iron Man movies. Like he didn't have to leave his fucking house. Yeah. He just put his head in his little helmet thing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> the face cam is all yeah. day, baby. Well, sure, but. I mean, again, it's especially with all the strike stuff about they want they don't want their likelihood to use without, you know, I just I think it's you might be a little surprised at how much the combined salary of Olivia Coleman and Hugh Grant may have been. I mean, that could be more than we think, although Where's I think Olivia you're right. Coleman in this movie. She's the she's the woman in the workhouse scribber or scrubber. Scrub oh. it. Scrub it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Miss Scrub it. Which I thought the whole thing with her and the and the guy that that was kind of weird. Sexy. That was kind of a weird place to take that, I thought. No, because I can no, because like when he bends over into the dungaroos, my five year old's laughing her ass off. You know what I mean? It's just you Well know, for a different it, reason it, it, than like adults are laughing their ass yeah, off. Well, yeah. Again, adults and kids laughing at the same thing well, for different So reasons. I made a comment when he puts his leg up on the table, I was like, She's looking at his balls right now. hundred <laughs> percent. She can't help it. His balls <laughs> are out. Like they're out. <laughs> Like, bro, I can see your balls. He's like, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Like that episode of Friends yeah. where that guy just puts his light in. Like Joey always all sees his nutsack the whole time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sure, sure, sure. I, I, I understand that. However, I again, I think it's... So if it, this was 125, it's only done 166 right now, and it's probably done the bulk. As, yeah. of, as of today, it's probably done the bulk of what it's going. Now, with, with a whole week of nothing new being released theatrically, maybe it kicks up another... You know, maybe it does. It has a really decent week. However, there is a ton. And when I say a ton of streaming stuff, I mean, there is a ton of streaming stuff being released now until January 5th. There's probably like 44, 40 or 45 things that people are going to want to watch. So, I mean, sure. But that doesn't really make any difference for Wonka. Yeah. So, because here's the no thing, good. like, if you're going to take your kids to see a movie for Christmas, you're going to have two choices, right? Which? Well, I don't no. really consider which choice. Wish, wish is the, is wish is the migration anymore. now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, wish is still out, though. Sure. Because, like, you know, I assume Wonka's already snowed it over, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, Wish, is, Wish isn't even part of the equation anymore. Migration or Wonka, that's that's it, I think. I mean, no, no, I mean, again, Chris, have you talked to anyone who's seen Wish? Wish is trash. <laughs> I don't think it's trash, but it, it's not doing what they wanted it to do, for sure. And I mean, I Of course seen not. It. it costs $200 million. Well, I haven't seen it, so I can't say if it's good or bad, but um, I, I would imagine it's probably on the opposite end of that because it's just no one's talking about it nobody not one person so that's a that's damning in itself but i would imagine yeah migration or this but it could do decent however so back to this is was there anything that you got i've said what i was looking for and didn't get was there anything that you guys were looking for and didn't get as far as this being a wonka movie a willy wonka film no i mean all jokes aside like this kind of hits all the wonka 
what I would think a Wonka movie would have to have in it for me. I was surprised there was not as much candy and chocolate. I thought there would be a little bit more. And I was surprised there wasn't more color when things were happening, like big things. Right? So I, I, Other than that. I think the color idea, and I understand what you mean. I think they used it for when they wanted it to stand out. Yeah, but there's only like two points I can think of color and that's the very end. And you know, there's, and when he has his, his little shop. Yeah. I think, well, I think that's why it's important for them though, because okay. like, it's supposed to be the big scene. Yeah. You know, because like, look there, there is, there's subtle color in this movie, yeah, but we only stay in the, in, in, especially in that shop scene, you're only in there for like three minutes before things go shitty. So it's sure. like, you don't even get like, you know, for that being the big scene, it's, I mean, I think it, it's like a bottle rocket, man. Yeah. And then we're done. I so think it, Roger it, it, might be right about though. They save the super colorful stuff for the most uh, what's the most, supposed to be important. What's supposed well, to be I the Wonka, that. like the Willy Wonka creation? But you think they'd stick there for like a few minutes longer than what they did? Well, I mean, that's why you got to get the second movie, buddy. True. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Sure, and I I, uh, I understand that, but I, yes, I agree with before his said, before the riot and the arson. <laughs> the arson. <laughs> you know, how many people like, we think died in that fire? Because look, I assume some. I you'd you'd, oh. you'd 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 have to. That was a raging inferno too. Like, yeah, it, like yeah. little. No. But same with like, like same with those kids from the first one. Like, I don't care what you tell me. Like, you know, the cartoonish state of the film. Like, well, you okay? They were just, you know, they were okay. Like, no, they were they were definitely dead. All those they kids, were they, harvested. Yeah, they were. Dead. <laughs> Let's talk about how quickly people were okay with uh, just flipping to arson and possible murder because their hair got turned color. And so Bro, it's twenty twenty three. And you're surprised by shit like, like that? It, well, it's like, man, like the violence snap was fast. Right? Yeah, like, it was. Whiplash. It was fast. It well, I mean, Crazy. but again, like they admit to it too. Like they admit that they did it, and nothing bad happens to them. Well, no, the, uh, well, that little girl got a mustache. That place got burned down. Now that's how that went. I thought yes, that. I mean, son. if you look at this movie in a different light, I mean, that they're trying to stop Wonka, and the police chief is absolutely incompetent. And, you know, the other guys are, I mean, there's a lot to be said here politically. We won't, we're not that kind, but like, there are definitely some things you can extrapolate if you are trying to do that. Are, um, how are we? You had a problem with, no. with you had a problem with, with the church comments and you want to dive into this? Let's well, go. On. Well, the reason I had a problem with the church comments State. is because they went, I mean, I just think that they took the church part and they went a little too far with maybe how some of that hits home for a lot. Maybe the church went a little too far. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just throw that out there. Sure. Fine. <laughs> I understand, but like again, I wouldn't even like. I like that's not my line. That's a Bill Burr line, by the way. <laughs> I liked the Rowan Atkinson character. I mean, I, I like Rowan Atkinson as an actor, so I'm glad they were yeah, able. Who to doesn't love him. Mr. Bean? Yeah, right. Yeah, Look, Mr. Bean's great. You ever see the movie about Mr. Bean? Like you, you swear that as you were a kid, there were a hundred episodes of Mr. Bean, but there's only like seven episodes total. So, hold on. I, I went. I went through like like three stages of surprise, shock, and horror in my show into the movie because when they showed Mr. Bean the first time. And the role he's in, right, with and like the connotations of the Catholic Church and all that, I thought it was Pee Wee Herman for a minute. Oh God! And I panicked. <laughs> I was like, "They are." Well, Pee Wee Herman's dead. I, I, so. I know. Like that's where like I, I snapped it. I Paul, figured it out. Paul yeah. Rubens is dead. Oh, Paul Rubens yeah. dead. But yeah, he's also not not a. They they would never have cast him. Anyway, I, I I know this. Mm-hmm. It makes sense they would. But I was like, Jesus. Well, like man, he's making. A, and then uh, like, it all came too. But I was like, I panicked for a moment. Same like, way, oh, you're not going to see you're not going to see any more Jonathan Majors either. <laughs> <laughs> for definitely not now, for sure. But yep. you're not gonna see yep. more of him either. But I mean, he probably deserves it. Um, yeah. But it's I don't know. I thought this church was a bit. I get what they're trying to do with it, and I just don't think it comes off like that. Does Are that you back sense? on the church thing? Well, no. We're, we're we're just talking about. So, I mean, if we're talking about pieces of this movie that work and don't work, let's talk about that. Church um, is fine. I have no problem with it. Yeah. Fair. Well, I thought it might have been a, a bridge too far, but maybe that's, just, that's just me. Maybe I'm reading way too much into it. But I liked Rowan Atkinson. I thought he was. I always think his mannerisms are pretty funny. I think he's a funny character actor to begin with. So I, I always oh, like yeah. him. Sure. No, yeah, no matter how we have to get him, him. He's, he's, the he's way he great. gives into the temptation of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my child. I don't have one. And puts it right into his mouth. Yeah, yeah of course. Mm-hmm. Um. So, what what else do I just want to want to bring up? I want to open the floor before I bring up a few more things. Uh, I don't think I have anything really we haven't touched on. No, I think yeah, yeah, like 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 the the, the secondary cast characters is fine. Again, I, I I think there's a little bit too much theater in this movie at times, which is kind of jarring. But you can't help that with the way it's set up, and then like you know the people you have on board, it's fine in the end. It doesn't like hurt the movie, and uh, the supporting cast is great. I think they do a good job. I think you know 
they serve their purpose. You know, I think act three is the weakest part of this film. I think it definitely kind of falls a little bit off the rails. At some point you get this weird espionage infiltration heist thing going yeah, on. Yeah, it's definitely a heist. Yeah, which is weird right in this movie, but whatever, it's fine. You know, like other than that, like like I think the movie is it, it, it does a good job. I think we touched on things I want to what's, talk about. What do you what's there? what's powering his kit in 1930? Uh, <laughs> uh dark magic. <laughs> the well, I just want to ask it, like what the children he harvested in the jungles. It's like how did he build his factory so fast and make it do some of that stuff? How did he power well, so okay, I, hold on. I, I don't I don't believe that he built the factory that fast. Yeah. I believe you ever watch those DIY shows where like they show you like the map it out what it's supposed the to be like plan yeah, like thing? that's yeah, yeah, what yeah. that is to me. He's yeah. like, "Look, open your eyes, baby's imagination." Yeah. We're, we're seeing like we're seeing like <laughs> like a like a 7 year like time lapse happening. Like, well, yeah, no, I'm I mean I mean the shop. Sorry, I'm I'm at the shop that he opened in was arsoned down but oh he died okay, oh, that came dark magic quick. yeah dark, yeah 100 yeah, yeah. and yeah. what yeah. like that little machine the little machine he had like what powers that i'm why am i stuck on that and why why can't i just let that go you i promise you so, hold on hold on i promise you out of everyone that saw this movie all 165 million dollars made of it you are the only person the only ticket that actually cares yeah you went like oh he's magic because oh he's magic yeah yeah, no, no one's wondering how his how everything's powered. No one cares. That's not what it Why is. Why are there no pigeons in that pigeon coop? He harvested their souls. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, but I don't know why I'm thinking about that. I just do. But yeah, it's yeah. it's also, I mean, the, the whole thing with the indentured servitude of this. It's just hmm. we haven't touched on that either. But I want, I mean, the whole the whole plot, the whole part of the movie dedicated to the indentured servitude and like his friends who he he helped to free and he bought their freedom at this at the. So does he own them? I mean, that's where I was going with it. But I mean, he or, bought their freedom, so you can take that however you want to. Did he buy their freedom, or can you buy them, them <laughs> from somebody else to free them? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if he's got pink slips. That's all that matters, I guess. And let's talk about the Kinda attempted like bill of sale. <laughs> and let's talk about the attempted murder of Wonka by blowing him up, trying to blow him up on his ship. So okay, so one thing I do want to mention about Wonka when wait, when the police chief smashes his head into the ice thing and is drowning him that would hurt like a son of a oh, bitch yeah. no yeah. Your, your, your face is smashed you're 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 got some serious issues after that yep I it, mean, it's it not hurt. a clean break it's not like a clean we like, cut you up yeah it would be, it would be bad. Mm-hmm. It'd, be, it'd be awful that's why that's why i did make that note that it's you take yeah. someone's face and you slam it through ice they i do like when problems. he was just like oh get you a bonk and he's like you didn't do that and he's like oh hang on hang on <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i did think that was funny yeah, yeah i mean here's the thing though i like i like keegan michael key like he's good at, is he ever bad in anything so far right no, like no. he's he's very good at what he does no him and uh so him and jordan peele the they don't miss it what they do. It seems like so far. So I don't disagree with you. He's, I mean, the police chief was meant to be a bumbling idiot anyway. So, sure, I mean, that's that's the whole thing. But one thing I, now, I think you and I, are, you you guys and I are going to be on very different pages on this. Is I really hated the inclusion of the pure imagination song in the end. I really Why? hated it. Not for that's I, his thing, brother. I understand, but that that's that's like one of the the titular songs of so the original. One. Hold up, hold up, hold a damn minute. How can you be the one champion the fact that this is a direct prequel to the Gene Wilder one and then have a problem with the fact they included the iconic song? Well, hear me out. That is, makes No, make it make sense. I, I'm, I'm trying. If you let me speak, I'm trying. I don't uh, have a problem with the song. I have a problem with it being so... <sighs> you could have done that in different ways that spoke to adults rather than just spoon-fed them is what I'm saying. Is you know He could have figured out that through... I mean, I thought that's where it was going was... Through the use of Noodle, a child, and he's not much older than a child himself in this movie, is you get that's what you get is imagination is better than everything. And that I thought that was going to be your realization in the end was pure imagination is what I build my factory on. But then he sings the song, and I'm like, well, that just kills it for me. Is I just, yeah, but what I think it's when the song is happening and what's happening on screen that is the message of the song in that moment this time around you know don't forget the correlation that that the girl made about finding her mother again yep was an imaginary tale she told herself well again imaginary is the is is the key word here that she had mapped out for herself that she dreamed about and then that imagination came to life in front of her the exact way she saw it yep 
Well, I, I totally understand that. However, I just, I just don't think he'd have the song queued up and ready That's to go. That's the song, though. That's the song. It's I, about bringing imagination to life. I get it. Uh, I, get I have it. no problem with the song in any capacity. Yeah, like, it, it fits wonderfully here. It fits in a heartfelt way. I get this it. Should, guys, should, I get this it. should take all your boxes. I get it, guys. I get it. I just thought it was a, it was a little too much. Like, it wasn't... I leave some up to the imagination. I'm like, oh, that's the song he sings. In. That's where he get it. That's where he, I just don't. I, I just think it's weird that he sings a song in both films. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You're Anyhow. the proverbial king of too much. I get it. I, I again, that's why I said we're gonna <laughs> you should to love the score. <laughs> <laughs> My God, you guys got to stop doing that. Um, I do love the score. And I, I look, I will I never this, do that. I, I think this movie hits in a lot of ways when it comes to the music, too. And I don't. The music, the, the the song, pure imagination is great, and it's performed wonderfully. There's nothing wrong with it. Except the fact, I just thought it was spoon fed too much. That's all. Mm. I told you we'd be on separate pages on that one. I told you we would be. I I'm just I'm surprised on the route that you're the stance that you're taking on it. Yes, it's just it, out of all the things I thought you would have or could say about this movie, I didn't. Believe. I thought you'd be like. I thought I thought you were gonna be like, hey guys. What do you think about the Pure Imagination song? Because I loved it. I know you guys are gonna hate it. Like I thought that was where we we're gonna go, but all right. I think it was. I don't think that was. I think that was probably a later edition in several drafts of the script. I don't think that was. Oh no, that was that was in from day one. You think so? Willie had to sing that song. There's such a through line. (laughs) Well, I get the through line, but again, you don't have to sing the song for the through line to be there. Pure imagination. You just have to have them see these things and finally understand what it's going to take to build that empire. Is the imagination of a child? It's their iconic song. Oh, fine. Okay, fine. But fine, 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 fine. So. The next Frozen movie will not have any music in it. <laughs> no. Yeah. What are you talking about? Of course it will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weird. <laughs> weird. Weird. <laughs> That's not what I'm arguing at all. Jeez Louise. <laughs> I'd be close with the point I'm trying to make. Oh my Chris God. got it. Yeah. <laughs> he understood. I get what you're trying to say, but it's not. It's not. Oh. The joke doesn't work because it's not the same way what I'm trying to say here. I yeah, laughed. I thought the, the joke, joke did work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! You had a bunch of silly bananas. I'll tell you what. Jesus. All right, last uh, f- a few things we want to talk about before we score. What do you want? Any, anything? Last words you want to say? Uh, so I'll say one thing negative um, because I haven't said much negative. This movie's too long. Um, just, a, just, 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 just a bit. A, just a so like, look, yeah. it comes in just under two hours. It feels a little bit long at some points, but you know, I understand it's not really specifically geared to me. Um, but like the first two thirds of this movie, like fly by mm-hmm. and like that last, like the last third or quarter of this film is like so much stuff happens and it doesn't seem like it's fast. So I think it's because it feels kind of out of place, honestly, is is because I agree with you. The fact that it, it the last part of it is definitely what feels like the longest. I think that they could have done without like without like the chocolate drowning murder thing. And then no, they needed that. Yeah, but like Catholic Church and all they, they could have done that in a different way. It didn't need to be the cho- it, didn't need, it didn't need to be the uh, the drowning in chocolate thing. It could have been anything else that could have took less time. The and- blood of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> wait, hold on. Ooh, did ch- did anyone ch- wait, hold on? Cherry filled chocolates. Did anyone see? Ooh, did anyone good. get blown up in this movie? Like 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 blown expanded? Up. Like like they got bigger and like you know expand like, no. like blue- the the cop did. Well, yeah, he the cop did so- a bunch of stuff. Well, he so- didn't eat the, uh- no, not like the blueberry. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I think you had to have the river of... I think you had to have the drowning in chocolate, or the almost drowning in chocolate, because that's how the drowning... Augustus, the first kid, or the second kid, whatever whatever kid it was, he, in that in the river chocolate, he almost drowned and died. And there's some direct correlation to the other ones, though? Because I don't think Yeah, was, I think that's all that thing about the blowing. I think someone got no inflated. Down. Keegan-Michael no Key got... down. Well, okay, I can't. That's not one that's there. I mean, someone... Did, are you sure no one got shrunk down in this movie? I can't remember. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think anybody got shrunk well, there was, down. Or, or things that or, happened were a direct correlation like, to the you want to drink film. the chocolate river stuff, because, like, you know the Oompa Loopas are just pissing in it. <laughs> Shitting in it, honestly. Yeah, for real. <laughs> 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 this is like, you know they ain't getting off the assembly line. They're just turning and pissing right into the river. <laughs> I mean, God damn it. <laughs> it's unsanitary. Like, I mean, look, it happens at Amazon now. True. So, like, you think true. it didn't happen? <laughs> That's true. That is very true. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I, I have my issues with this movie. Um, It's not perfect. I don't think it is. And I'll move to score it, though. I, I do. I'll go first if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, yeah sure. Go I do think this movie deserves every bit of a seven. I don't think it deserves any higher. This is my personal thing. I don't think it's any higher than that. 
but I, this is a well-made movie. I think that uh, Chris, you may not agree, but I think it resonates well with the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which is what I think they were going for. But I, I, I think it, it, it's a, it's a good representation of the movie that comes later in the timeline, but was made first. But I, I think the movie does a lot well. It does, it does a lot. It does more well than it does bad, and that's I think important to note because most movies today we watch, especially from Netflix, that's not true at all. Mm-hmm. So. A seven is worth six, six for me. I think Timothy Chalamet is excellent. I thought the a lot of the musical numbers were were fun and well inspired, and they really kind of they kind of captured that imagination that we you go into a movie and it's just there's so much imagination in this movie, and I think that's important too, given especially given the given the um the the content is it's that's one thing they had to nail, and I think they did is a lot of crazy stuff right out of a child's imagination. I think they nailed that. Except for like the indentured servitude part and the arson, but sure. Oh no, they nailed that too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those are depicted exactly how you depict them on the screen if you were doing such True. a thing. But I'm 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 happy I mean, with subject Wonka. matter is questionable, sure. But <laughs> how they portrayed is accurate. I'm happy with Wonka and I do hope it probably deserves to be nominated for some of the music stuff. But all the all the talk about Wonka being, you know, all these Oscar I just don't see it. Outside of the music, I just don't see Oscar nominations. But that that's just me. That's just me. Gotcha. Uh, I'll go second. The um, I think our movie about the our dark magician Cat Williams character is great. I think all the way through, you know, it it, it it's a fine time. Uh, a little bit muted than what I was expected, I guess. But the first, the original is muted for a long time, and then it gets colorful. So maybe it's just more spread out throughout. Uh, the musical numbers are fine. You know, it's all like the movie is fine, start to finish. Gets a little wonky at the end. Wonky, wonky, not no pun wonky. intended. Stop. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's fun enough. I would like, I would have liked to see a little bit shorter and a little bit more vibrancy, I guess, in the movie at times. A little bit more chocolate stuff, but it is what it is. This movie is six and a half. I think, I think it's pretty good. I think this, it's better than average movie. It's fine. It's a good family film to watch. You know, with you know, with with, with you know everybody around. So yeah, six and a half. So for me, um. I, I'm, it's a seven for me. Like I didn't have any problems with this movie besides the fact it's probably a little bit too long. I didn't think anything really felt out of place. And I do feel like it's made more for adults and stuff than what I thought it was going to be. And that's, that's a good thing. Mm. Um, like Timothy Chalamet is fine. No, sorry. Fine. It's not the right word. He's never bad in anything is what I'm trying he's to good say. In this. And he's good in this. And like, I think it works. You know, I was happy to see it. It's, it's a good movie. I think for most folks, you'll find it at least entertaining. Yeah. I think my six and a half comes from like 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 this definitely isn't my kind of movie. I don't like musicals. I don't like singing in my in my in my movies. I don't like theater movies. I don't I, I don't like any like anything that's like pulled from Broadway or done in Broadway style. It's just not for me. It never has been. So like I think that's where my enjoyment kind of jumps out a little bit. I was bored at, at times. I was eye rolly when like I heard the music num- like the music start in the background to prep the music number. But again, that's a me thing. And I think that's kind of where, like, I just wasn't able to get as excited for this as I was waiting for it to end with it's a little bit longer runtime. So. Chris, you like um, Greatest Showman, don't you? That's yes, but that that is an exception to for me. That that movie is I be, like the story it tells hits home to me. I, I, I connect with it. Well, so. I was going to say because the the presentation of most of those musical numbers is very very theatrical, like 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 on stage. It is how they're set it up is, is like but, very theatrical. The, the the songs in that are very loud though you know what i mean like like in, in the way it's attitude and the way it's delivered as well and i think that helps but again the message in the greatest showman like i i haven't watched that movie in so long because i know i'm gonna cry like a bitch if i watch it again so well i mean i think hugh jackman's also a key element in the liking of that movie because he's just so good at what he does singing dancing oh well yeah absolutely. Charisma, but, uh, everything he, about he, it but a lot of those oh, Zach just, Efron is Zach Efron's fucking fantastic well, in sure it too, right? the, you know what that's I mean? weird he has so many abs it's <laughs> all the abs <laughs> That was the same year as Baywatch, wasn't it? 2018, something like that. I don't know, I maybe think so. 2017. Yeah. I don't know, one of those years. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it sits. My original, when I walked out of there, I was like, this is a six. And then I thought about it mm-hmm. some more. I really sat down with my thoughts and thought about it and watched the original film and thought about this one. And I was I was going to try to watch this one again. I just didn't have the time. But well, I really think it's the 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 whole the, the entire point jump is 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 well deserved. What if he's a vampire? <laughs> Think that's about the, it. That's one. He's of been on a boat for seven years. He's been going port to port. He's out in daytime. He's so. That's um. Yeah, I mean, it's the cloudy movie? in England, right? What's that? So. What's that movie? We um. The Last Voyage Boy. of the Demeter. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Like that's his boat. Oh, shit. He landed. <laughs> that's, that's the orchestra. Yeah, like he's right? been going port to port for seven years, <laughs> absorbing the magic from other magical beings. Oh, God. You know, I think what one of the things that really I think put it up for me was the use of the mom. I really that's I I'm a guy yeah, who loves yeah. that and like it cannot be under it cannot be overstated enough that like that's such a powerful motivator and I think they used it right in this especially when he's like I'm sorry mom I didn't and then like and then he sees things differently in the end and it kind of changes perspective but I really think that is like that that was so well done the whole the mom is the motivator was so good that sure. I just I I can't can't stop thinking about that for at least one thing that's good right so you want to change your score. No seven. You That's where I'm putting go, it. Go up again. Okay, gotcha. No, 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 no. I don't want to go up again. I don't. Again, I don't think this movie is worthy of any Oscars outside of the music stuff. But it'll be nominated for everything because that's just how what we live in is. You got to nominate that stuff. No, it won't. You don't think? Nope. Well, I know that a lot of people in DGA they got screeners of this, so I don't know what it's nominated for outside. If it's in, for anything outside the music, but I know people got screeners of Wonka. If they got screeners, then it got nominations. So, I, I don't know what it's nominated for, though. The, the, Besides, the, it won't even win Best Musical. Let's I don't go into fucking Ryan Gosling, brother. Yeah, it is. Or The Color Purple. I think you're underestimating the time in which we live. I think you're underestimating Jack Black as Bowser and Mario as well, singing the Peach <laughs> song. Fine, but best that's... Original song, best original Peaches. song, baby. I, oh, yeah. I could see that. I could see that. However, I that doesn't have a shot in hell. Eight hundred and three consecutive, uh, not consecutive. Eight hundred and three uh, congruent plays of peaches on YouTube. Good. I don't That's think a- that has a shot in hell of winning against Amazing. this. Or the odd part is the guy. I'm just Ken. The the guys that that got their screeners, they got these weeks and weeks ago. Like before, yeah, once how screeners even, work. Yeah, yeah I, I understand that, but like they've had them for for like oh, more than a month. In Wonka, that's how movies you know. get leaked to the internet, sir. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great, thank True. you, Roger. I just don't think allegedly. I, mean, I don't know, but I don't think I don't think any. I, I'll, I'll be upset if this wins Oscars because it's just it's just not good enough. I don't get that vibe. Yeah, I mean, either. For anything but the music. I'm not worried about it. Get the music. I mean, look, if it gets nominated for music, like, I wouldn't argue about it. No, of course not. But that's the only thing it's going to get. Not, it should be nominated for. All right. Maybe it's just a hot take of mine that I probably should not say, but it's like. It's I, can do, I can the... see for costumes. Yeah, okay. I could. Damn it, Roger. Yeah, okay. I, I can see for the, for the costumes. Cause what about are... Leo? For what? For musical. No. You mean the Netflix film? Yeah. With the lizard? Yeah, it's got tons of songs. No, they've not a chance in hell. <laughs> that's a weird know, that's a weird suggestion, man. But all right, all right. I don't know, man. Let's end this episode there. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me for Honka, as Roger says. This has been episode 362A of Ford Love of Cinema, a movie podcast. Hey. Hey. Each new episode posts every Tuesday and Friday morning at 5 a.m. on the podcast service of your choice of the following five. Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Podbean, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Podbean. Spotify, <laughs> Amazon Music. Please leave a comment or two, rate, subscribe. Every little bit helps. More importantly, thank you very much for listening. Check out the show on Twitter at Love Cinema Pod. I'm at Grayson Maxwell One. I am at Rod Stillian. I'm Christopher Bond. No don't, Twitter. don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Always posting things on social media. Send us an email to for the love of cinema podcast at gmail.com. And next week, we're taking a look at, <laughs> I laugh because Aquaman, the Lost Kingdom, and also Rebel Moon, part one, A Child of Fire. Who's ready for fucking bad sci-fi, baby? Week's gonna baby? Be, next week's going to be sweet. <laughs> <laughs>